I want to welcome you to Performance Reps Northwest 2021 webinar, Drive Food Sales with Countertop Equipment featuring Equipex. I'm Janelle Rupp with Performance Reps Northwest, and I'll be moderating the webinar today. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping things that I would like to go over. One is that this webinar will be recorded. Next is that Q&A will be handled at the end of the webinar. You will see that you have a chat feature in um, your Zoom. You can go ahead and use that chat fe feature to post any questions, and we will address those at the end of the webinar. Please go ahead and mute yourself, and then we'll get started with the event. I'm going to hand it over. Today we have Felicia Whiting. She's the National Sales Director for Equipex. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you, Felicia. Hi. Thank you, Janelle, um, for that introduction. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I am honored that um, PRNW invited me to do this with them on their webinar. So let me just give you a little background on Equipex. Our offices and production facility are located on the East Coast in Providence, Rhode Island. We partner with two production facilities from France, Adventis for induction and Roller Grill for our electric countertop line. And we take the sub parts and parts from them and we do the final assembly all of the uh, testings and approvals right here in Rhode Island. And what you need to know about our partner production facilities in France is that they make everything in those two production facilities from the components to the bodies of the equipment. And there is nothing imported from any other Asian country. Everything is made right there in France. And um, then we take it here and and uh, finish the process. So you can count on um, high quality equipment that is moderately priced for what we believe is really best value. We focus on small countertop equipment that is niche focused, but very versatile and will help enhance any menu and increase food productivity. And so what I'd like to talk about is um, first is the very popular uh, curbside takeout and delivery aspect of the um, food service industry from this past year and how that helped many businesses uh, stay open. And we believe this trend will continue and a very popular choice for customers. So whether you just want to add a few pieces to your um, original back of the house line in the kitchen um, for new and improved menu items, or you'd like to bring a smaller second line closer to the front where the pickup and delivery area is, we have the equipment for you. So let's get started. Let's talk about our induction equipment. We have over 50 models when talking about um, wattage, countertop, drop-ins. And we also have a hood that appears with that induction equipment if ventilation is needed. Because of course, when adding new equipment, sometimes a ventilation problem does arise, whether it's to control smoke and odor or you have been ordered from, for your, um, from your local fire inspector or marshal that um, event is needed with fire suppression. I say about 50% of the time customers purchase the vent to control smoke and odor um, for a better cooking environment, whether it's back of the house cooking or upfront cooking, airport kiosk cooking, whatever that might be. And then 50% of the time is because um, a local inspector has ordered that they need ventilation with fire suppression. So our induction equipment, our countertop induction equipment, very versatile. Um, you'll see the two images right there on the right hand side. That is our super heavy duty line. It's called the brick at the bottom. And then we have our walk induction also. Now induction is very energy efficient. Okay, it's going to heat up very quickly. It's going to keep your cooking environment 
cooler because all of the energy, all of the heat is generated into the pan and the contents of the pan. And it's safer. You can't burn yourself on the glass. You could actually touch the glass as long as you didn't touch the pan. You would not burn yourself. You could actually, and we've done this before, put a piece of paper or a dollar bill under the pan and do your cooking and it wouldn't burn up because it is just a basic, um, basic physics lesson where you turn the unit on, you put the pan down and that electromagnetic pan, it must be an induction pan, we recommend three, five or seven ply for best results. That electromagnetic pan draws up that energy into the pan and it actually changes the molecular structure of the pan, which in turn um, changes into heat and it heats the contents of the pan. Cooking very accurately, very quickly and very easily. It's 90 to 95% energy efficient, where gas is only 45 and 55% efficient. So what makes our induction equipment better than the competition? Mainly it's the coil. Now in our super heavy duty line, those two images I just showed, the brick and the wok, we have an 11 inch coil. It is the largest in the industry. For our two zone, single zones, drop-ins, under counter, we have an eight inch coil. But even in the eight inch coil, we have a special airflow design. So if you will look at the image on the left, you will see the coil is not wrapped tightly and there are spaces there in between for airflow to keep the coils cool. The competition here on the right-hand side, they wrap their coils tightly, which causes the coils to overheat um, and in a busy kitchen where they're trying to use that induction cooker all day, it's not going to be possible. They're going to overheat, they're going to shut down. Ours with this special coil and the two fans in every unit, even the single units, that will keep the induction equipment cool. So it truly is a commercial induction unit made for the busiest of kitchens that can be kept on all day and you don't have to worry about it overheating or shutting down. We also have capacitive touch controls, um, which you can see here in this remote control panel. And that capacitive touch control is like the uh, touch screen on your iPhone where it's just easier to clean, it makes it more hygienic and there's no knobs for food to get stuck under. And let's show you this video here. This is our induction cooker drop-in melting chocolate, which is a very precise cooking fu function at about 86 degrees. You don't have to stir it. And then you can leave it there so that it stays melted and it will not burn the chocolate. You just turn it down to the lowest setting. It keeps the chocolate warm without burning it. And you have perfectly melted chocolate for a signature dessert. So these are images of some of our other induction cookers. I already introduced you to the brick, which has the 11 inch coil. It's a very versatile piece of equipment where you can melt chocolate in a small pan. You can boil two quarts of water in four minutes. You can make soup, sauces, uh, do your saute work, your prep work. <clears throat> whatever size pan you put on there, that is where it will heat up. For instance, if you're putting the small pan on, it will only heat up where the small pan rests. The entire um, area will not heat up. It will just heat up under the size of your pan. The other great thing about this um, piece of equipment here at the brick is that it has a P1 and P2 function to preset your favorite temperatures, but that can also be used to test your conductivity capability of your induction pan. As I said, we recommend three, five, or seven ply. Your pans are very important. For instance, if this was the brick 3000 watt unit, 
you would turn it on, you would rest your pan on the glass, and you would press the P1 and P2 button at the same time it, when it would give you a reading. If it is an excellent pan, it will read at at, at least 2,900 watts or 3,000 watts, which means you are attracting all of the energy available to you in that induction cooker. If it read 1800 watts, well, you might as well have spent uh, less money on an 1800 watt cooker because that's all the energy you're pulling out. So be sure to use good induction ready pans with your induction equipment. This is our wok. We have um, two available wok units. This is the more economical um, wok induction cooker. It still has the 11 inch coil under that curved glass, but the controls are lower. They're not up close. And I'll tell you, we just, um, we sell these to a chain for Asian cooking. And they like this more economical wok unit better because the controls are further away from the cooking area. So there will be less spillage or overheating. And they've been using them for a while and they love them and have not had any issue with it at all. Um, the, you know, people wonder when you're flipping the food in the wok, does you know, the heat shut off? It does not because it's going to give you five to 10 seconds before it does that with the wok equipment. So it's not going on and it's remaining on as the uh, food and the pan are being flipped. We have our double cookers in side to side or front to back, depending on how your kitchen is configured. We have our drop-in units, single and double. The doubles come with a remote control panel that you can install uh, in the apron of your counter. And now I'd like to talk for just a minute about our under counter system, um, which isn't necessarily something you would use for curbside and takeout unless you, um, you know, were using it to keep something warm. But we do also have our um, drop in units for that that come in 650 watts for warming um, and also coming 1800 or 3000 watts for cooking. These undercounting units are mostly used um, in hotels, resorts and VIP suites and stadiums, which is where we have many, many induction units for keeping food warm for people who come and tout the VIP suites to watch basketball, baseball, football, whatever it might be. Um, these uh, units get installed underneath the counter and it can be a stone counter, engineered stone. It could be glass, porcelain, cement. It's been tested under many counters and has been successful. Obviously, you don't want to install it under a laminated counter, um, something with a lot of glue in it, because it will warp and damage it over time because of the heat. So this gets installed onto your counter. And if you look at this bottom image, you'll see a little white circle. That's the sensor that must rest right up against the um, underside of your counter and you use induction ready chafing dishes to draw up that energy. Now in this image, we have the controls um, right in the counter, but most of the time they're behind the cabinet or in the apron of the counter so that nothing is seen on the counter for equipment, which means once your buffet service is done, you just take the chafing dishes away, you wipe the counter down and you can use it for something else. And you'd never know that you just had <clears throat> buffet service equipment there, um, serving breakfast or lunch, whatever it might be. The counter remains cooler than the chafing dishes and the contents of the pan because of our induct meat. And that's what we call this floppy silicone piece that you see in the image here. You can cut it down. We make it um, wide for the large oval in induction ready chafing dishes. But if you had a smaller round one, you just easily slice it right down so that you can't see it sticking out from underneath the pan. And the reason why you want to use your induct mate is to protect the counter from the heat and from scratches. Um, and it just over time, the counter won't crack because of the heat that um, is being generated from the pan. And what happens is it keeps your counter cooler than the pan. It'll get to about 110 degrees. So it's warm, but it's not hot enough to burn 
um, your guests or your staff. And as soon as buffet service is done, you don't have to wait for the counter to cool down and you can just wipe it right off. Now our competition uses an expensive radio frequency trivet with their under counter system. Um, it's, I think they sell for about $300 where our induct mate can be replaced for about $80 if it's lost. But the thing is, if the staff does misplace the induct mate, you can still use the unit. It, the counter will heat up um, to about the same temperature as the chafing dish, but the unit won't be out of service. If our competition's radio frequency trivet break or is lost, then that unit is out of service. It cannot be used without it. We are also priced less than our competition and just have an easier to use system. So our panini grills, Equipex began about 26 years ago selling cast iron, heavy duty, fine grain panini grills. And we still have those original five footprints, the small Savoy, the normal panini size panini, the Double Majestic, Extra Large Diablo, and Panini XL with a 14-inch cooking square. Chefs love that cast iron grill because it's tried and true. It's the workhorse of the kitchen. It'll go all day long. But the biggest thing is that there can be carbon buildup on that cast iron. And if your kitchen staff isn't cleaning it properly with the wire brush at the end of the day, that carbon buildup could interfere with um, your preheating and your cooking. So we have upgraded that to a panini premium and it's an enameled cast iron and enamel baked on at a very high heat. So it's not the type of enamel that will peel off. You can still use your metal utensils. It's not going to peel or scrape off, but it is going to be easier to clean. You don't have to use the wire brush now. You can just use a scotch bright pad or the green side of a scrubby and some soap and water, and it cleans very easy, um, which you know solves the problem of that carbon buildup on the regular cast iron. You also get a selector switch with the Panini Premium, which enables you to keep the top plate off and use the bottom as a griddle. Um, it also comes with a, an electronic timer and a grease. So it has been upgraded and it's only 10% more than our regular line of panini grills. And I do want to mention another thing that makes our panini, bills, panini grills better than the competition is our serpentine shaped heating element. So you have a heating element that covers the entire underside of the plate Whereas the competition uses round coils and you have cool spots in your corners. There are no cool spots on our plates and you can load up, especially the 14 inch grill, as many food products as you want. And they're all going to be done at the same time. Now, as you see this video here running, this is our VG Panini Grill, which has also been upgraded. The single panini grill is available in 120 or 208, 240, and the 208, 240 is 3,000 watts. The double will give you 6,000 watts combined. It's very fast, even faster than the cast iron. It will preheat in about two and a half minutes and toast your sandwich in about three minutes. It uses contact and infrared heat, so it's penetrating straight through to the center of the food, cooking and heating very evenly. It also produces a lot less smoke than the cast iron grill because these are glass plates and they're not porous or, or absorb. You don't need to use butter or oil. You can use it for taste, but you don't need to use it to cook. And as you can see, they're not using any butter or oil. They are just um, opening it up, taking it off. Nothing is sticking and it's just very little smoke and it doesn't leave behind a big mess. Very easy to clean with a damp cloth. You could even use a blade. If some cheese or something was to stick on the glass, you will not damage it. A lot of people ask, well, do they crack easily? Not under normal wear and tear, but if you drop something really heavy from up above, it probably would. Now you'll notice there is a toasting collar on the bottom of the plate when that opens up. That is removable and can be washed in your pot sink or dishwasher. And what that does for certain foods that you're cooking on your grill, if you don't need the top to rest down on the top of the sandwich, if you're cooking a panini, 
Um, I, I failed to mention that the top does come ribbed. It's a ribbed glass, so you see the lines in your sandwich if you're cooking paninis. But what this does is um, the toasting collar, it creates um, a sort of um, oven where you are containing the heat. And so using that toasting collar will increase um, your toasting speed even more, about 30 seconds to a minute faster with the toasting collar, depending on what you're cooking. So we did talk about the um, Panini Premiums. These are images of the Panini and the Diablo. Um, those are the only two models available right now in the Panini Premium with that enameled cast iron. Uh, as you can see, you have the grease tray here and the, and, um, the electronic timers and that comes standard. It's not an extra charge. And you will get an eight and a half minute preheat time instead of 15 minutes with the regular cast iron. And that's because on the underside of the plates, we have um, made grooves where we can slip that heating element up into those grooves, which brings it closer to the surface of the plate. So you're going to preheat and cook faster. Waffles and crepes. I mean, Equipex has an extensive line of small footprint equipment. And we love waffles and crepes. Our waffle makers are very popular. They're one of our best sellers for you know, restaurants that want to make a good quality waffle. It's obviously um, you know, a heavy duty, fine grain cast iron waffle maker. They're even heavier than our panini grills. So it's not for that uh, breakfast buffet in the hotel. Um, you don't want your guests to be using this. They could break a finger, but um, this does not need to be clipped or spun around for even heating. You pour your batter mix in, you close it, and two minutes later, you have that perfect waffle for breakfast, for dessert, even for lunch. So you pair it with sweet or savory and add a, a ton of different menu items with just a waffle or even a crepe. Crepes can also be sweet or savory and it's a very high profit item for a restaurant because it just costs cents to make um, each crepe and waffle with pennies for each one, um, but you charge you know, a higher price for them, especially if you know they're stuffed with some really delicious ingredients. Uh, we saw a restaurant who inquired about our waffle makers. They wanted to do a test and we looked at their menu and what they were doing with it. They were making sandwiches. They were making quesadillas with the waffles, with the thinner waffle, the cone plates that we have available for um, ice cream cones. They were using that to make quesadillas. So, I mean, the, really, the applications are endless. And we have um, the crate makers in 120 volts, a smaller, lighter weight one that can be taken on location for caterers, and then our more heavy duty waffle makers, um, excuse me, crate makers in the 208, 240, which will just give you a lot more power and less recovery time. We also have our crate kits that will hold, hold your batter spreader. Um, and we have a little sponge here to help you spread the oil on it. But that is an enameled cast iron plate. So you don't need much seasoning to cook the crepes and waffles and it's really easy to clean um, at the end of the day and bring back that shine on the enamel. Now our waffles um, do need to be cleaned with the, that wire brush at the end of the day. You do wanna get them nice and clean. That is not an enameled cast iron. Um, it does come with a uh, wraparound stainless steel batter protector to protect the body and the counter from any batter spillage. And that comes off very easily, can be thrown in your pot sink or dishwasher. We have six different plate designs, the Belgium, the Liège, the round, the cone for ice cream cones or quesadillas, obviously, or two different waffles on a stick, which you see in this image here. It's just a fun walk around food item for you know, concession stand, stands, county fairs, farmers markets. And then you can pour any type of um, like sauce or Nutella, or frosting, sprinkles, whatever, however you want to dress it up. 
And we also have the warmets to keep those toppings warm, whether it's for the waffle maker or for the crepes. We have the single and the double warm it. And it will warm up your Nutella, your strawberry sauce, your chocolate sauce without using any water. So you don't have water dripping all over the place. Now let's talk about our ovens, our, our convection ovens and our pizza ovens. Um, we also have a hood for that. If a hood is needed, we have a hood with a longer top that captures the smoke odor and grease laden vapor that comes out of the front loading equipment like convection ovens and pizza ovens. These are great pieces of equipment for, uh, you know, maybe some breweries, vineyards, bars that need to add good quality food to their menus. Our pizza oven will make a quality pizzeria style pizza that tastes like it just came out of a brick oven. Our larger one cooks a rectangular 24 inch and our smaller one cooks a 16 inch round. You can also get it in the double stacked or you can purchase a stacking kit and stack them up to three or four tall. Our convection ovens come in quarter size, half size, and full size. Um, and even in our quarter size oven, we offer a four shelf capacity in 120 volts. We also offer the turbo quartz feature at the top of the oven where you can do your finishing, broiling, or melting. So now you have a two in one appliance where you're not just doing your convection baking, but you're doing your toasting and finishing on the top shelf when you have that added quartz heating element. And now I do want to talk about our newest half size oven, which is just a two foot by two foot box. It still doesn't take up much room on the counter. And this is our quick cook. It has four different heating modes and I'll run the video while I'm talking about it. What happened? There we go. Put a background noise in that video. So I'm going to talk about it. There's four different cooking modes. As you see there, you have your convection um, baking and your convection fan in the rear of the oven. And then you have your quartz heating elements at the top for your finishing and your melting. And now we've added a third heating element. It's a calorie heating element at the bottom of the oven to help with cakes and pies, those thicker food items that don't necessarily cook very well in a strictly convection oven, especially in 120 volts, you need the extra power for that. And now you can do that and you can choose which cooking mode you want, or you can do it all together. Melt something on the top shelf, um, cook your cakes and pies or bake some breads or, or roast some potatoes all at the same time. You can, um, it, it's thermostatically controlled up to five, 570 and it also comes with a timer. Now let's talk about our, our ventless hoods with um, the pre-piping for Ansel. So we do sell griddles and countertop fryers. Um, griddles are a perfect way, whether you're talking about the one zone, two zone, or three zone, small and compact, perfect way to uh, fit into a smaller kitchen where you don't have a lot of room and you want to add something that needs to be cooked on a griddle. And now we have our new stainless steel griddles. So we have them in um, uh, rolled steel, stainless steel, cast iron, chrome and enameled steel. So it has that enamel on it for easier cleaning and cooking. Um, our stain, new stainless steel griddle will preheat in 10 minutes and it's uh, one of the more popular cooking surface surfaces for chefs. But when using griddles and fryers, you most likely need ventilation with an Ansel system. And we do offer pre-piping for Ansel, as you'll see in this image. This is the pre-piping that has been installed into our vents. We have a local Ansel distributor come in about every two weeks to install that into the vents that have been ordered with pre-piping. And you can get a one nozzle or a two nozzle. If it was a two nozzle, the pipe would come over the top and the two nozzles would hang down from the middle. So if the local fire inspector is requiring Ansel, we do have that, but once it gets out 
to the customer. They are responsible for contacting their local ANSEL person to come in and finish the hookup with the tank and the electrical wiring and everything that goes along with that. And our spec sheet does thoroughly cover what is included in the cost of the pre-piping, nozzle swivels, caps, chrome dipped pipings uh, and fittings. And then what would be the responsibility of the customer? So you want to be sure to inform the customer that would there would still be an extra cost for them um, to have their local rental person come in and hook up that tank. Now, this is an image here with um, two vents side by side or nose to nose, two different configurations you could use in a kitchen that has room for it. Um, face to face could also be used for demonstration cooking where the chef is behind where all the controls are and the customers could be um, looking on and watching while cooking. Now, this is great if you have a piece of equipment that is too large for the platform of our vent you just have more than one piece of equipment and you need an entire ventilation station. You would order the vent with a right-hand control and a left-hand control. They come standard with right-hand controls, which means the on-off button, the motor, and the grease tray that pulls out eight inches um, are located on the right. There is no extra charge for ordering those controls to be put on the left hand side and that way you push them right together and you have that entire ventilation station right there. And if you will notice these are vents with a height extension, they're a little bit taller, six inches, side extensions and front extensions, which we can add on to our vents for, for that larger piece of um, equipment. We don't want to go uh, too much larger than the three inch side extensions and the six inch front extensions because you want um, the smoke, the odor and the grease laying vapors to stay within the capture zone and not be with the out outside of that capture zone and it runs at about 500 CFMs. And speaking of capturing, here is a video in our production facility of the hood capturing that smoke. Our vents use three filters, a grease filter, a particulate filter, and a carbon filter. Down at the bottom are two images, the image of our particulate filter and carbon filter. And those are disposable filters. They need to be replaced at about every six months, depending on how greasy your menu is. And that really is the only maintenance you need is some extra filters on hand to replace them every six months. They're not too expensive. I think they're about $80 to $100 uh, resale cost, depending on where you purchase them. The third filter is a grease filter, and that is um, aluminum and can be washed in your, in your pot sink or dishwasher. So that can be reused. It does not have to be replaced. And this is just a quick video showing that grease filter being put in to the vent and taken out very easily. It goes in at an angle so that the grease strips off of it into the grease tray. And there is a safety feature. If you'll notice, notice these little um, buttons here, those are for the filters. If they're not placed into the vent properly, the vent won't turn on. So if someone calls us and tells us their vent won't turn on, we automatically know it's the grease filters. We, we never have any um, warranty or maintenance calls on our vents. They run and run for years without any problems. As long as you're replacing those filters and keeping it clean and taking care of it, it will run for years without any issues. So I just want to talk about our warming displays. Um, before we end our presentation. And we have our brand new warming displays. If you see on the left hand side, the black lacquer and stainless steel in a two to three shelf capacity and a three to five shelf capacity, they're the same with different heights. The small one is available with uh, server side doors, loading doors that are vertically on hinges and open up vertically. And then you can also get it as an option with front self-service horizontal doors that open up horizontally. Um, 
that is your choice with the smaller case. You can get just the server side or both. With the larger case, it is only available with the server side doors. It has electronic controls, um, humidity tray, but what is really great about these warming displays is the way it heats. Underneath the bottom panel is our heating and our coward heating element and on top of it rests a fire brick. It's the same fire brick that we have in our pizza ovens. And we have two fans that blows the heat over the fire brick into the warming display. So it's almost like convection heating. So it's evenly warming all of the food inside, but it's also retaining the heat, which is very important to keep that food at proper temperature, while you know you're waiting for your customer to pick up that food or you're waiting for your delivery person to show up um, or this can also be used for a grab and go items it's the perfect case for many many different types of locations and you can be confident that it is keeping proper temperature with that fire brick and those two fans we also have our more economical displays these are plexiglass where our newer ones are all glass um, and I failed to mention the LED lighting, which really makes the food pop. Now with our more economical displays, they're plexiglass, but they're available in one shelf or two shelf um, with or without a lighted top menu. It also has a humidity tray that keeps the food moist and fresh. Our ambient display, displays here come in a small and a larger size. It is high quality tempered glass shelves, sides, tops, a wood bottom, aluminum corners. Um, it's just a very sleek um, design uh, that can really fit into any type of um, environment at any type of restaurant, whether it's a fancy high-end restaurant or a small, you know, bakery that just wants to display some pastries. Our chill display does not use any electricity. It uses eutectic chill plates underneath that bottom panel. The small one has one eutectic chill plate. The larger one has three eutectic chill plates. So you would keep them in the freezer and uh, overnight, preferably take them out and install the eutectic chill plates when you are ready to display your food and it will keep your food chilled for four hours. Both sides of the case, both doors open upwards and are great for say maybe a business meeting um, in the center of a conference table or a farmer's market or the front of a restaurant or bakery where you don't have to worry about, about putting it near an outlet to plug in, you can put it anywhere. And if you needed more than four hours, you just buy an extra of plates and keep them in the freezer and swap them out at the four hour mark. So to wrap things up, as I mentioned, everything is assembled here in Providence, Rhode Island. We have a one year warranty on our roller grill countertop equipment. We have a two year replacement warranty our, on our Adventi's induction line, which means we will take it back and replace it with a brand new or refurbished piece of induction equipment. Our events have a one year warranty and I do want to mention that they're made right here in the United States. This event is something that Equipex um, created and invented because they saw a need for the ventilation with the small equipment they were selling. And we make those and assemble those right here at our Providence Rhode Island uh, production facility. All uh, engineering and customer service support is right here on location. And when you call, you get an actual human being. If you get our voicemail, we will call you back. And we are here to help in any way. So now does anyone have any questions? Yeah, hey, Felicia, thank you so much for all of that great information. Um, so many countertop solutions. So, you know, I have to say, you mentioned customer service that you actually get a human on the other end of the line and that is super refreshing to hear. <laughs> I yes, don't know about all of you, but yes. Yeah. We get a lot of compliments on that. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. I mean, especially today. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions and you know, we can take questions as well. Just go ahead and post those in the, the chat box. But we you're, you're sharing these ventless hoods. Can you explain some instances where um 
these hoods are required for countertop equipment or why they might be purchased for countertop equipment? Yes, so I did mention about 50% of the orders um, are just people who have heard about the vent. They are inquiring about it because they would like to control the smoke and odor. Sometimes they're doing some front of the house cooking and they don't want the smoke going into the dining area. Um, for instance, Einstein bagels in port kiosks all across the country have purchased our vents particularly to control the smell of the eggs that they're cooking because there was complaints in the airport of the egg smell. So it controls that odor for them. Uh, they can be used in high rise buildings where traditional vents cannot be installed or historical buildings. Um, maybe you're just a small little cafe and you don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on that traditional hood to be installed and you just have a few pieces of equipment. This hood is perfect for that. Now, we always say once we get um, a vent order, we immediately send out a vent form and we want to know what kind of equipment you're using with the vent. We want to make sure you're purchasing the right vent. Do you need the Mistral that has the longer overhang for the front opening equipment? Or do you need the Pally, the one that we sell most of? We have about 1,800 of them in the field because those are paired with induction equipment, panini grills, crate makers, countertop grills, and fryers. So we want to make sure you're choosing the right vent. We also want to make sure it fits on our platform. Do you need extensions? Or are you going to need two vents because of the piece of equipment is too big. And then we also need to know that you have the approvals of any local official that is necessary. And it's different in every county. People will call us and ask if this piece of equipment will need fire suppression. I can't answer that question. Only local officials can because it's different everywhere depending on how the codes are enforced. Some are more rigorously enforced, like say Chicago, New York, or LA. And we do have special approvals in New York City and LA because they are so strict. Um, we even have a special sticker we have to put on our vent for New York City. So if they come in and say, even though that's an induction cooker, you could be cooking proteins in a pan on that induction cooker. So you're going to need fire suppression. And so they will search us out for that ventilation and fire suppression for those countertop induction equipment. Yeah, and I just went through that recently, Felicia, with one of my customers. And the form is really simple, easy to fill out. Yes. Um, you just form customer and they check the boxes. And, and like I said, I think it's really important that they get that um, health department to sign off on it. We've all been in that situation where something ships out and, um, Correct. you know, we haven't dotted our eyes and crossed our keys. So. No, I mean, and it's, yeah. it's expensive to ship. It's 180 shipping pounds, um, which is why we want to know beforehand if you need fire suppression, because we need to do the pre-piping in our production facility. A lot of people ask, well, can our local Ansel person do this? If they've never done it, um, we don't want to risk them damaging the vent because it's installed in a very particular way where it doesn't damage anything on the inside of the vent, which is why we do the pre-piping here. And you don't want to find out that you need fire suppression after you get your vent out to you and then you have to pay to have it shipped back to us. Great. You know, and um, before we end here, I wanted to talk a little bit about induction. You shared a lot of information about uh, the induction. And I have to say that video with the chocolate resonated with me because, <laughs> you know, it's really, um, I think once you melt chocolate, it's so easy to burn it. So it's, it's pretty interesting yes, that I've done it many with times. The <laughs> yeah. So, hey, tell me a little bit about that induct stone induction. What type of countertop can be used with that system? Yeah, so you can use um, stone, quartz, engineered stone, um, like Corian. Um, we've even tested it with porcelain, glass, and cement. It cannot be used under a stainless steel um, table or countertop. Many people inquire about that. It, it, or like a laminate countertop. You don't want anything with too much glue in it because it will warp over time as it is, as it is exposed to the heat. But then that induct mate is used to keep the countertop cooler so you don't get cracks in your stone or your engineered stone over time because even stone can crack when exposed to heat. But that silicone piece um, keeps your counter protected from scratches and overheating. And then what kind of pans do you recommend using with the induction equipment? 
Yes, so like I said, you do need a good quality pan. We recommend three, five, or seven ply. I mean, I'm not going to recommend them by brand name, um, but definitely three, five, or seven ply pan. It needs to be electromagnetic. You can even use cast iron as long as the bottom doesn't have enamel on it because that enamel will black, uh, block um, the magnetic capability of that pan to pull the energy up out of the coil. And so the best pan you can get, the better your cooking will be, and you'll be pulling all of the available power out to you, especially if you're investing in, say, you know, a, a 3600 um, watt unit that is much more expensive than a little, you know, 1800 countertop unit. Um, if you're using, you know, the double induction that has the 5,000, 7,000 watts, if, if you're investing in a unit like that, you have to invest in your pans also. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's a really good. Um, go ahead. Sorry, Jada. <laughs> So I was going to say, I think that's a really good point. I know that question comes up a lot about the uh, quality of the induction pans and, and just helping people understand that you do have to purchase specific induction pans to conduct that heat the way it's meant to be conducted. Right. Your chafing dishes, too, if you're using induction for your buffet, they need to be induction ready chafing dishes. And I well, have a um, question again, on the chat box. Uh, yep. Okay. Do you know yes, how I loud? I do know how loud the vents are and you can use them in the front of the house. So it is 70 decibels. Um, I compare that to um, a semi crowded restaurant conversation level, or if you're riding in a car with the windows closed at 60 miles an hour, it's kind of that background noise. After a while, it just blends in almost like white noise. Um, if you're using it in your kitchen, it just blends in with the uh, refrigeration equipment. Um, but even in the front of the house, it's not loud enough to, you know, that people would think um, they can't talk over it or anything. It will actually blend into the conversation level of a restaurant. That's a great question. Um, let's go ahead and wrap up with one more question and then uh, we'll close this out. But can you just quickly go over the lead times for Equipex? We have excellent lead times. And I mean, unfortunately through this pandemic, a lot of manufacturers had um, have had trouble um, getting um, equipment out. Uh, we have not had any trouble. Our production partners in France have not had any trouble. Um, you know, making the components and shipping them to us. There have been a few container delays on the ocean. Um, we've all heard about that, where some of our containers were delayed a couple of weeks, but we keep so much in stock here that it hasn't really affected us. So lead time on our equipment in stock at our warehouse, which is most all items, is one to two days. Um, even for the standard vents, one to two days, and we can ship it out to you. Now, if a vent needed fire suppression or any of the modifications, height, side, or front extensions, that would take it to 10 to 12 business days. Okay, that's great. Well, again, thank you so much today for your time, Felicia. Thank you, thank you to all of you for attending. Um, I thank you. Like to go let you all know if you have any other questions that come up about Equipex, you can reach out to any one of us on the Performance Reps Northwest team. You can shoot us an email at solutions at prnw.com. And lastly, I would like to tell you to save the date for April 20th. That's our next webinar, which is Think Inside the Box, Energy Savings and Rock in Coolers with Coal Pack. So again, Felicia, thank you. And thank you to everybody for attending. Thank you everyone for joining me.